Good morning, everyone. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to continue uh, from where we stopped last time. So we are in chapter uh, seven, people past and present. We reached to Roger Federer. So we are going, intentionally I'm going to read this paragraph though there are uh, so many missing information. But I'm going to read it because when I understand this paragraph, I will be able to answer the questions here in writing biographies. Biographies means writing one's, uh, one's life, writing about someone's life, okay? So I'm going to read this paragraph. Roger Federer, I believe uh, many of you know who is Roger Federer. He is a very famous tennis player. Roger Federer is probably the best and most famous tennis player in the world today. He was born in Basel in Switzerland in 1981. His parents encouraged him to start playing tennis when he was eight years old. He won his first Wimbledon title, the Wimbledon Junior, at the age of 16. Over the next few years, he played all over the world, including in Australia. However, it was in the year 2003 that he really began to show just how good he was. He started the year by winning two tournaments in a row, in the way and Mercilius. He also won his first Grand Slam title at the Wimbledon Championships. In 2004, he won three out of four Grand Slam titles. In the Australian Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. In 2006, he equaled Pete Sampras record of winning Wimbledon four times in a row. However, he is still one championship behind Bjorn Borg. When he is not playing tennis, Federer is busy with his special project, the Roger Federer Foundation. He is also a goodwill ambassador to UNICEF, which also helps poor children around the world. Of course, uh, I think some of the students have another version and some of the information here somehow is different. In that, uh, some of the new uh, version uh, states that in 2007, he equaled Bjorn Borgs, not in 2006. And also, uh, there is uh, extra information stating that Federer went on to win the title for a sixth time in 2009. But this version, the one that you have uh, seen here, doesn't have uh, such information. Okay, but uh, anyhow, you can get the whole information about uh, Roger Federer if you just write the first sentence and put it in any engine uh, or site. You immediately going to get full information about him. Okay, now read the biography of Roger Federer. Answer the questions. 
when means meta and where was he born i believe in previous lectures i have explained how to use wh questions and i remember i told you when we use wh questions it means that we we need more information to supply the uh, missing information that we have so it is different from yes no question in which in uh, yes no question we depend on the auxiliary found in the sentence and we ask uh, by that auxiliary we put it in initial position before the subject so we have it initially then the subject then the main verb then the complement uh, and we ask then we put a full stop and we expect the answer will be either yes or no and i also remember i told you if there is no auxiliary in the sentence and we have only the main verb, we can depend on a verb to do to fill this gap. So depending on the subject, whether it is singular or plural, and according to the tense uh, of the verb, we can use which one of verb to do, uh, which one is uh, uh, relevant to be asked uh, with. So we uh, uh, choose one of uh, uh, the auxiliaries from verb to, uh, to do because we have do, does, and did. Do and does for present and did for uh, past. If the subject is singular, we use does in the present time. If it is a plural, we use do in present time. And if it is in the uh, past, we use did for uh, uh, singular and plural subjects. But if we want more information, we use another type of questions which in which we call WH question. And I gave you a list uh, from these WH question. And the rules for using WH questions, we use the, 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 the item, we use the WH uh, word, we put it initially, then we use uh, auxiliary verb, then we use the subject, then the main verb, and we delete from the uh, the statement, we delete from it the required information. So suppose I want to ask about a, a time. I have to delete anything concerning the time from the statement that I'm going to change it to interrogative, change it to a question. Okay, so here in one, you have when, which, who, what. These are WH questions. We use when for time. We use where for places. We use which for uh, abstract and inanimate things. And we use, we use who for people. And we use what to ask about, uh, also about things, not human. Okay. When and where was he, Roger Federer, born? When and where? By reading uh, this paragraph, that's why I intentionally have read it, because I want to pick up the information from it. So he was born in Basel, in Switzerland. This is where, this is the place. In 1981, so this is the time, when? Okay, when did he win his first Grand Slam title? So when? Here it is about the time, year, when? Okay, so uh, after reading the paragraph, it was in the year 2003 that he really began to show just how good he was. So in 2003, he started, and this he started, and he won his first Grand Slam title. Okay? Now, number three, which three competitions did he win in 2004? 
So I have a date here. 2004, 2004. It, uh, it said which three competitions. So uh, the three out of four was the Australian Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. These are the three. Okay, number four, who has also won four, four Wimbledon finals in a row? Who? Okay, it says here, in 2006, he equaled Bates Sampras record of winning Wimbledon four times in a row. In another version, it is five times in a row. The question is about five. And in, in, in the another version, uh, actually, it is uh, it is uh, not uh, bet. It is Bjorn. Bjorn Borg. In this version, it is Bet Sambras. So it is Bet Sambras record of winning Wimbledon four times. So it is Bet Sambras. What is the name of, of, uh, of uh, Federer's special projects? What is the name? So the special name is the Roger Federer Foundation. Roger Federer Foundation is the name of Federer's special project. So you, your answer will be, it is the Roger Federer Foundation which is the name of Federer's special projects. These are the five questions. These are the five questions. Okay. Number two. There is some extra information about the tennis player. Write it in the correct place in the text. So, we have a text, this text, and there are some missing information. We have four, and here we have four blanks, as you see. Okay. But then it says you have to read study skull. This is the study skull, adding extra information. How can I add an extra information? One way of adding, uh, adding extra information is to use a non-defining relative clause. Relative clause means an item in which we use it to refer to something which has been mentioned previously. So it is an addition information to something that is stated before. I add information to something or someone that is or he is stated before. And there are so many who in which I referred back to someone mentioned previously. And also we have which for things and animals in which I want to connect ideas about them. So to refer back to them and where in which I want to refer back to places mentioned previously. Also when in which I want to refer back to uh, times referred to previously or mentioned previously. So because I'm going to refer to something I mentioned previously, it means that there is a relation they are like relatives. That's why they said relative clues refers back to something. And actually it is preferred to use them with part of the sentence. That part uh, contains uh, past information. As if I'm referring to something in the past, to this person or to this thing. 
as a reminder or as a definition. So since the information is about that thing or that person, it means it, th there is a relation. They are relative. That's why we call it a relative clause. Okay. Uh, in uh, this study school, uh, they uh, actually we have uh, examples. So let's see. Roger Fre uh, Federer. Roger Federer is a very famous tennis player. This is one sentence. Full stop. He was born in Basel. He was born in Basel. So this information is old. Was. While this is new. Of course, using the relative clause with uh, in, in two uh, uh, cases is also relevant. But for me, I prefer to use the relative clause with past information. But let's see uh, here. Roger Federer. Who was? So instead of repeating he, which refers back to Roger Federer, instead of re repeating this pronoun, I use a relative pronoun, who, which refers back to Roger Federer. So instead of repeating he, he I delete he, omit he, and I push this, I pull this, this type of sentence, I pull it and put it with who, because who is used for people, but I separate it by two commas. Roger Federer, comma, who was born in Basel. See, I pull, I pull this information in which it was at the end of the sentence. I pull it to put it in the middle with the relative clause who, who was born in Basel, comma, is a very famous tennis player. Separating this information between two commas, it means that this information can be deleted, taken out from the sentence without affecting the meaning of the sentence. We call it a position. A position yani ibdal. So this is extra information added to Roger. I can remove it without affecting the meaning of the sentence. Or the writer uses another way in which actually I don't prefer it because who means I'm going to define the person. So it means that I'm going to bring all the information about him to the listener to add to the new one. So Roger Federer, who is a very famous tennis player, was born in Basel. Was born in Basel. Okay. Use commas and relative comma, this comma, and relative pronouns. This is relative pronouns. Who? I told you why it is relative. Who for people, which for things and animals, and where for places, but omit there. No need to add there since you use where. Basel is a city in Switzerland. Full stop. Roger Federer was born there. So if I use where, I have to delete there because there is an indication uh, for a place. Okay. Basel, which is a place, I use here where instead of who because I'm talking about a place. Basel, where Roger Federer was born. See, I got the old information. Roger Federer was born. So where Roger Federer was born is a city in Switzerland. Then I put the new information. Okay. Now, let's move to this and fill the gaps here. Then we will move to another uh, question in which we are going to use relative clauses the way cited in the statistical. Okay. Now, 
Roger Federer is probably the best and most famous tennis player in the world today. He was born in Basel in Switzerland in 1981. His parents, since they are human, so I'm going to define them, to say something about them. Of course, I have who, where, which, who. I can't use where, I can't use which, so I have to use one of these two. Who won five? Uh, of course, it is not this consecutive finals. It is who met when Roger's father was in South Africa on business. So I have to take this one, the fourth one, and put it here. Put it here. Then I continue, encouraged him to start playing tennis when he was 10 years old. He won his first Wimbledon title, the Wimbledon Junior, at the age of 16. Over the next few years, he played all over the world, including in Australia, in which it is a place. So I have to fill it with something referring to a place, not who, not which, not who, of course, where, because where's, uh, where refers to a place, where, he represented Switzerland in the 2000 Olympic Games. So this is number two. Then I continue. However, it was in the year 2003 that he really began to show just how good he was. He started the year by winning two tournaments in a row in Dubai and Marsilia. He also won his first Grand Slam title at the Wimbledon uh, championships in 2004 he won three out of four grand slam titles in the australia open australian open wimbledon and the u.s open in 2006 uh, six he equaled bet sampras record of uh, winning wimbledon four times in a row however he still he is still one uh, ch uh, championship Behind, uh, behind Bjorn Borgs, Bjorn, Bjorn Borg. Okay, here uh, something missing. So I'm talking about uh, Bjorn Borg. So uh, I think it is relevant to use who won five uh, consecutive finals at Wimbledon. So we use uh, number three who won five. Uh, consecutive finals at uh, Wimbledon here. Okay. When he is not playing tennis, uh, Federer is busy with his uh, special project, the Roger F uh, Federer Foundation, number four, which helps disadvantaged children, which helps disadvantaged children. He is also a goodwill ambassador. Now we answer the uh, or full the four blanks here by the four information. If you search the engine or websites, you might find extra information and you can add it to this paragraph. Okay, now let's move to exercise number three. Join the two sentences using a relative clause with who, which, or where. Okay. Arthur Conan Doyle was a Scottish doctor. Full stop. He wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories. Now, what is required is to uh, link the two sentences by using the relative pronoun. Okay. As I told you, it is better to link the old information with the relative pronoun. So I can say that Arthur Conan Doyle, who was, because he is a, a, a person, who was a Scottish doctor, comma, so I'm going to link. Here there is a full stop. I have to delete the full stop. I have to add comma to link the two sentences. Okay, Arthur Conan Doyle, who was a Scottish doctor, comma, and I have to delete here he. I don't, I don't want to repeat the same uh, pronoun. 
then comma wrote the Sherlock uh, Holmes stories. Or since the two sentences are, uh, are in the past, the two sentences are in the past, I can say Arthur Cannon, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories was a Scottish doctor because the two sentences uh, belong to the same uh, tense, to the same era. Both are in the past. So who you can use it, this who, you can use it either uh, in the first part or in the second part. So you have two answers. Arthur Cannon Doyle, who was a Scottish doctor, comma, wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories. Or Arthur Cannon uh, Doyle, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes stories, comma, was a Scottish doctor. Now, let's move to uh, number two. The phone Andres, uh, sorry, the, the phone uh, Amadis, the film Amadis is about the life of Mozart. It won eight Oscars. The film Amadis is about the life of Mozart. It won eight Oscars. Here present is, here is past, won. So it is preferable to say, so of course we are talking about the film. It is not relevant to use who. It is relevant to use which, and it is not relevant to use where, because it is not a place. So I can say the film, which won, which uh, the film, which won eight Oscars is about the life of Mozart. It will be better. The film, which won eight Oscars, comma, is about the life of Mozart. Of course, some prefer to say the film, the film, uh, the film Amadeus, which is about the life of Mozart, comma, won eight Oscars. But actually, I prefer since the information I'm going to, to, to mention is about the film, so the, it seems that they are in the past. So I prefer to, uh, to say it like this. Uh, the film Amadis, which won eight Oscars, comma, is about the life of Mozart. Okay, number three. Stratford upon Avon is a beautiful little town. Full stop. Shakespeare was born there. Okay, now this is past and this is the present. And I'm talking about a place, Stratford upon Avon. So naturally, I have to use where, because I'm talking about a place. Since I have old information and new information, so it is better to say Stratford upon Avon, where, where was Shakespeare born, is a beautiful little town. Where Shakespeare was born, is a beautiful little town. Stratford Abon Avon, where Shakespeare was born, where Shakespeare was born, and you have to delete there because it is an indication for a place. You have to delete there. You put comma, where Shakespeare was born, comma, is a beautiful little town. Okay. Read the study skull. Put the bio, uh, biographical information about Nelson Mandela. I believe you all know who is Nelson Mandela. Into chronological order, from the old till the new. Chronologically, from the old till the new. Okay. Study skull, organizing ideas, number two. Always consider carefully the most appropriate way to organize the information in your writing. So you have to start from the old till the new. That's why I prefer to use relative pronouns uh, by uh, pulling or putting the old information beside the relative then the new. So you have to start from the old 
till the new. When writing a biography, for example, it is used. Uh, it is usual to follow a chronological order, chronological order, from old to new. That is time order, time order. Okay. So this is Nelson uh, Nelson Mandela, most famous politician in the world. We have information about him, but they are not uh, put in uh, in order. They are not in order. Okay. So our task is to uh, to uh, put or write them orderly, chronologically, from old to the new. Okay. After reading this information, you will discover that Mandela, born in South Africa in 1918, became the most famous statesman in the world. Of course, because this is the birth. So it should come, it should come first. Okay, number two, actively involved in the African National Congress and the fight and the fight against the apartheid apartheid apart apartheid اللي هما العنصريين اللي يفرقون بين الاسود والابيض the separation of black and white people apartheid this is number two. Was released from prison after uh, 27 years in 1990. Won the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Peace Prize shared with the president, the clerk, the clerk, the clerk. Okay, this is number three. Four, became first democratically elected president of South Africa in 1994. See here, 1990. And here, 1994. So this is number four. Number five, retired. Now, this is the end. Retired from politics in 2004. Moved back to Gono. He was born there. Now, we order them chronologically. Chronologically. Okay. Now, we have used the information taken uh, from uh, this exercise from uh, Nelson Mandela and uh, try to show uh, to uh, write short biography use the information from exercise 4 from this and try to write a short biography of Mandela approximately 100 words and you should use the relative pronouns to link the ideas. We can say Nelson Mandela, who became the most famous statesman in the world, was born in South Africa in 1918. He was actively involved in the African National Congress and the fight against apartheid, which is the separation of black and white people. He was imprisoned for 27 years. He was released from prison in 1990 and won the Nobel Prize, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize, which, which he shared with uh, President the Clerk.
He became the first democratical elected president of South Africa in 1994. In 2004, he retired from politics and moved back to Gono, where he was born. So I use this information, the same information, and I link, link the sentences by relative clauses. Now, writing from research, we can, of course, depend or take Nelson Mandela as an ideal and write a biography of a famous person from your academic field or from your country, anyone famous in your country or anywhere, uh, anyone you like, writer or poet. Almost 150 words. Research five central facts, write down five central facts like birth, early life, career, what he, she is most famous for, what he, she is doing today, and of course add extra information. And you can depend on or, uh, or use same way as we have in Nelson, uh, Nelson Mandela. Now let's move to uh, moves to organizing vocabulary two because we last lecture we have organizing vocabulary one. Returning back to the extracts extracts that we have read A to G, we can depend on the information in uh, those paragraphs, and we can fill the gaps here by that information. Of course. I believe I have read the paragraphs to you and uh, I believe some of the meanings you understand from the context. Okay. So use words and phrases from the website extracts on page 41 to complete the sentences. The life of the philosopher Socrates is... So there are very few facts about him, very few facts. It means that all documented, all documented. Okay. Molay is a famous French, one of his most famous plays is the miser. Plays. So he's what? He is a playwright, a playwright. Hamlet is an example of a, it has an unhappy ending, unhappy, a tragedy, unhappy. So there is a hint here. You can know the answer from the, uh, the, 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 the text. Okay. This book is by Oxford University Press. This is a press, so it is published. This book is published by Oxford University Press. Okay. Uh, Vikram Seth is a famous Indian. He has written many books, many books, many books. So he is an Indian author, an Indian author. Airport, uh, airport, Bookshops often only sell the most popular and widely read books. Best seller, sell, best seller, the most popular and widely read books. Joan Keats is a famous British, his famous, his most famous poem is to autumn. So he is a poet. He is a poet. I prefer to see at the theater because they make me laugh. Comedies. I prefer to see comedies at the theater because they make me laugh. Okay. Now, Statistical, topic, vocabulary. Keep a vocabulary note on computer file 
and give each page, even even a, a vocabulary notebook or a computer file, and give each page a topic title. For example, if you are, uh, of course, you are uh, all researchers now. So suppose you are going to write your thesis and you are searching for information. So you keep a vocabulary notebook or a file in the in your computer. So leave uh, one file to definitions with the name definitions, another file for types, a third one for strategies, a fourth for uh, for uh, disciplines, theories, it is like this. So each file has its own name and all the things that ha uh, have a relation with this file you put on. So as if you are going to make classification, you classify things and put them in order to make uh, things easy for you. When you, you, when you start writing, you, you immediately go to the file that you need. You are going to find all the collected information there. So you are going to save time. Okay. Record all new words of the same topic together on one page. What has a relation to this file, you put it in this file. What does it, uh, uh, and, uh, if there is no relation with this file and it, they have a relation to another file, put them in that file. So keep files separate. And each file should has, uh, each file should have its own uh, title or name. Like for instance, this diagram. So I have the arts. I have one file for music, one file for art, one file for literature, another file for cinema. Uh, some editions, they don't have uh, all items written. New editions, you will find the arts, you will find music and cinema only. There is no art, there is no literature. You are going to add these together because we are going to depend on this box. This box contains many items, different arts. So I have to classify them to choose each one and put it in its relevant place. For those whom they have the edition only with the music and cinema, not these things, not the, these two circles, they have circles empty. Let's first fill music and cinema and what, what, uh, what else, what uh, remains, we can distribute it here and here. Okay. So for music, let's pick up the things that have a relation to music, like composer, like a conductor. See, composer, conductor, uh, like a, song, a songwriter, a songwriter. See, a songwriter. Like uh, opera like opera, music, like jazz. See, jazz, opera, songwriter, composer, conductor. All we put them here because they have a relation to music. Okay, if we move to cinema, cinema, let's have what things that have a relation to cinema. We have a director, Mukhraj, a director, we have a movie, we pick it and put it here. We have a role for a, a hero, we pick it and put it here. We have a star, a star, okay? We have an actor, an actor, a star, a movie, a director. Good. And for literature, for literature, for literature, we have um, a novel. It is a type of literature. 
We have an author, type of literature. We have uh, poetry. We have prose, nether, short story. See? Thus, uh, this belongs to literature. What remains will belong to art. Belong to art, like um, a portrait, portrait, like a landscape, sculpture, as you see, an abstract, these will be not belong to the art. So here you know how you classify things. Similar with similar. So what belongs to this, I put it with this. What belongs to that, I put it to that. Same in your writing. When you want to write, it is the same thing. You have to classify things. You have to have a vocabulary notebook. Uh, or in your computer, you have files and name these files and put each uh, the information required to each relevant file. Definition to definitions, types to types, strategies to strategies, uh, um, uh, uh, curriculum, uh, things, whatever, uh, pictures, diagrams. So you have to put names to these files. And then when you start writing, the operation will be uh, easy for you because everything will be classified, tight, and ordered. Okay. Now, number three, complete sentences, one to eight, with the verbs in the box. So, so these are verbs. These are verbs. And as you see, all the verbs are in the past tense. They are in the past tense, composed. Conducted, designed, directed, wrote. Some uh, regular ED, they are passed by uh, making pass by adding ED regularly. Some irregular, they uh, change the vowel of the word. Painted, played. Third, as you see. Okay, now let's. Um, of course, when you are going to fill the blanks, at the same time, you are going to know a new information. You are going to know a new information. Information that you don't know, maybe. Some of you, maybe they don't know. Okay. Lord Norman Foster. Lord Norman Foster, the Milau Viaduct, Milau Viaduct, the highest bridge in the world. Lord Norman Foster, so I have to, to uh, add uh, here a verb, either composed or conducted or designed, so I have to choose one. Melau Vidict, the highest bridge, the highest bridge in the world. This is the bridge. So he designed. Designed will be here. Designed. Designed the Melau Vidict, the highest bridge in the world. Okay. Charles Dickens. Many novels. Many novels. Many novels. What did he do? He wrote many novels. So wrote should be here. Wrote many novels. Okay. Number three. Number three. Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock. Thr thrillers. Thrillers. Directed. Akhraje. Thrillers. Directed. Okay. Verdi number four. Number four. Verdi, many famous operas. Many famous operas. Composed. Composed. Many famous operas. 
Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. In Advert Adventure Films. In Advert Adventure Films. Start. Start. In Adventure Films. Vancouver. Vancouver. The Sunflowers and many other famous pictures. Pictures. He painted. He painted the sunflowers and many other famous pictures. Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin. The piano. The piano. Played the piano. Played the piano. And uh, Sir George Salty. Sir George Salty. The London Philharmonic Orchestra. Philharmonic or Orchestra. The last one, it is um, number eight, conducted, conducted, conducted. Okay? Now, number four, what are the comments about? What are the comments about? Use the vocabulary in exercise two. About whom? About, about, uh, it, it says that we have to use exercise number two. Exercise number two. It means that I'm going to depend on these, on these information here. Okay. It is about 10 meters tall. It is a description made of a black metal and stands in city square. It is what? It is what? It is a sculpture. It is a sculpture. Nahit. It is a sculpture. Okay. It is just lots of circles of different colors. A child could have done it. A child could have done it. A painting. A painting or an abstract. A painting. The lead actor was great and the special effects were brilliant. A film. A film. It is about a film. I couldn't stop until the last page. It was so exciting. It was so exciting. A novel. A novel. It was all in Italian. It was all in Italian. So I didn't understand the words, but the music was beautiful. It is an opera. It is an opera. Okay? After finishing this, we come to the end of Chapter 7. I hope you uh, benefit from uh, the information I gave you. And I hope re you record uh, everything. I write down everything about the information here. So next lecture, we are going to uh, start uh, Chapter 8, The Word of IT. Uh, thank you for your time and concern. Uh, good luck and uh, goodbye.